This tutorial is going to be dealing with how to sync audio to your drill file. At this point, we are presupposing that you have already reviewed the tutorials on how to set up your music score and then how to create your page tabs and set those up. So now we're going to be dealing with an audio file. While Pyware will accept WAV files and it will also accept MP3 files, both of those types of files have issues. An MP3 file is a variable bitrate file that can sometimes cause problems with Pyware and you'll have a lot of audio skipping. Sometimes it'll crash the program. Sometimes you won't be able to save it. So it's best avoided. Uh, an MP3 is best avoided. WAV files have a different issue. As you can see here, this is an almost 20 megabyte file. That's fairly large. And when you sync audio into your Pyware drill file, it saves the audio into the file as a package. And it's going to be a really rather large file. It's going to be difficult to send via email. It's going to be difficult to work with if your computer's memory is not exactly the best. So the Pyware team actually recommends that we save audio files as an Aug Vorbis file. Now, this is a format that you may never have heard of before. It's been around for a while. But it's easy to create an Aug Vorbis file from an existing MP3, AAC, WAV file, you need one of two things. You can either do it online. There are websites that will allow you to upload an audio file and then it'll spit out an Aug Vorbis file. Or you can use a program called Audacity. And let me go ahead and open that up. Audacity is a cross-platform program. It is available for both Macs and PCs. And it's a wonderful piece of software that is actually really quite powerful. So let's take my Eleanor Wigby, uh, Rigby wave file. We're going to go ahead and just drag that directly into Audacity. Now, the other great thing about Audacity is if, for example, you wanted to cut out several measures here or copy and paste this to over here, you're able to do it on Audacity. So I can't recommend the software highly enough. There's also all sorts of great effects that you can add to the audio. But for now, all we really need to do is to export it as an AUG file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to just export it right into that same folder. Don't have to touch anything here. Just save. And it was that quick. I mean, that took less than three seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And now take a look at the size difference here. This OGG file is only, it's less than two megabytes, whereas the WAV file is almost 20 megabytes. That's pretty huge, and it's a pretty big difference. So you're going to want to transfer all of your files that you're going to use into OGG files. Once that's done, we come back over to our Pyware project, and we go into our File and Document Options. Under the Preferences tab, you're going to see a section called Animation, and there's going to be an area for you to be able to add an audio file. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Eleanor Rigby.ogg file. Note that I could also choose the WAV file because it can take WAV, it can take MP3. It's just best to use OGG files. Um, it's going to give you this, uh, this do you want to re-enter drills little question no matter what you do, just to always hit yes. Then I'm going to hit OK. And right now nothing has happened. And nothing will happen until you go over here and press either the play arrow or the speaker icon here. When you do that, you end up with this, the audio file synchronization window. And it's got some choices for you. The simplest choice will be to press the space bar once per count. And so basically, the music would start playing, and you'll press the space bar for every beat. So that's going to tell the program where every beat is. It's extremely useful. The press space bar once per set command it, it may not always work. I mean, it might work in this particular file because it's a MIDI file and the audio, I'm sorry, the tempo stays the same all the way throughout. But it's still kind of a hassle and you're going to have to make sure you know just how many counts are in it. The press spacebar once at the beginning and once at the ending count, yeah, that will only ever work if the tempo does not change at all between the beginning and the end. And still, you have to sit there in front of your computer and time your ending click just right. I have only used it once or twice to mixed results. Press spacebar at the beginning of the music, then sync by page tab tempo. This is a fairly new setting. Essentially, you're going to go into every page tab and tell it what the tempo is. And then you're going to press the spacebar at the beginning of 
that particular page tab. And again, mixed results. To be honest with you, that sounds tedious and it sounds like it would take even more time than just pressing the space bar once per account. So I would try that first. And then if you want to experiment with everything else, you can go ahead and do that. Now what happens as soon as I hit start synchronization, the music is going to play. So I'm gonna to need to be ready to click that space bar for count one right away. And then I'm gonna keep clicking it for every single count. So we're just gonna do the first 72 counts. So right now I am just clicking the space bar for every count. And you can see whether your phrases line up with your page stats. So we should be coming to the hold right here. And move. And we're gonna stop there. And you stop by clicking on that little check mark that we just saw over here on the lower left hand corner. And it's really just that simple. Now, the great thing is, is that when I go to take a look at page two, I should be able to hear all the music between count zero and count 16. And it'll do that for every page tab, I can hear just the music that would be associated with that particular transition. So let's just build a very quick form and we can show you how this works with uh, the audio and the visual movements mixed in. All right, and we'll clone that once across the stage and omit the overlaps. All right, so that's our just our opening form. And for this first transition, You'll note it's a 16 count transition. I'm going to use the push tool to just move it forward 16 counts. So it's a 16 count forward move. Hit accept. And now I'm going to go into the real view and take a look at what this looks like. Let's get a nicer background presentation. And as long as I have the speaker icon pressed, I'll hear the music. If I don't have it pressed, it'll just do the, uh, let's try that. Yeah, it, it'll just do the motion, but it won't do the music. So let's go ahead and do it with the music. Yeah, and it has problems when it's uh, low on memory, and right now, because I'm also recording the screen, it's taking up quite a lot of the memory. But basically, we just saw a 16 count move. Then I could go up to the third page tab and do a different kind of 16 count move. Maybe we, maybe we straighten this out into a company front. And all these commands, we, we can cover them in a different tutorial at some other point. We'll just do a three step company front line. And you can see it here in this window or in real view. Okay, so far so good. And if you want to hear it from the very beginning here and watch it from the very beginning, you can set that uh, icon right there to basically play from the beginning to the end. And we'll stop it because we really only have 32 counts of drill design right now. Okay, so that just basically shows you how easy it is to sync the audio to the, um, to the drill counts here. The only real problem comes when you're dealing with a file that has a lot of counts in it. So if you're working on a seven minute opener, which I hope you never would, then that might have a lot of counts in it and you're gonna be clicking that space bar for a long while. And if you mess up, there's really no way to fix that. You're gonna have to start from the beginning again. The last thing that you need to worry about doing is saving the file. So you're going to go over to File, Save. Uh, 
let's do a save as because I already had saved this file from before. When you do that, make sure that it is not down here on 3D drill file because if you do that, it's not going to save any of the external files. And what are some of the external files? Well, the audio we just added, that would be one. So make sure that you have the 3D drill package saved. That way it's going to save the drill, the audio, any props you've added, any fabrics you've added. And I'm glad that this is now the default. This used to be the default down here. And now this is the default and that's good because we want to be able to save all that stuff. You'll give it a name in this case. I've already kind of done this, so I'm not gonna go through it again, but give it whatever name you've got and then hit save and then that should be it. And you have added audio to your file. If you run into any issues, just make sure you did use an OGG file. If you added an MP3 file, you might have issues with skipping or it might crash your program. If you use a WAV file, it's just gonna be a little bit too big to be useful. So just keep that in mind. That has been adding audio to a PyWare drill file. In future tutorials, we'll take a look at other aspects of the program.